Hi, it's Wes. And it looks like the uh, trend of me putting flames in my YouTube thumbnails is certainly coming to a middle. Finally have the 8300 Pro, and let's not waste any time. We're here for one thing, and one thing only. Before I actually put this to the test in an in-depth review, we're gonna try to wreck it. Because, I don't know, that seems like the thing to do. Already, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's a soft power button instead of a hard power switch. Oh, there we have it. Ugh. Take that off. So, if you haven't been here before for an overheating test, this is going to be the same as always. We have a four second delay. We're going to be firing at half power to see how long this can run before it overheats. The manual, interestingly enough, doesn't have an overheating table. So normally a Godox flash, actually, you know what? Let's get this going before I start talking. So typically a Godox flash overheats or thermally throttles after a given period of time based on a numerical table. So if you have more power, it will overheat faster. If you're flashing faster, it'll overheat faster and vice versa. Now, interestingly enough, the manual didn't have that. Maybe there's going to be a larger digital manual later. There's nothing on the website yet. Perhaps we're a bit too new to have that information just yet. But we're flashing good right now. You can see my past overheating videos. We have the 8600 Pro, 8200, V1, V860 Mark II, where we put all these to the test as well, and they performed about as expected. Our interior temperature right now is 18.7 degrees Celsius, in case you're wondering. Still a bit cool outside right now. That may or may not affect our overheat times. And of course, later on, we're going to be going in-depth testing this in a variety of scenarios just to see how this holds up and what kind of work you can actually get done with this. I have to say though, my first impression when opening this, it is so much smaller than I expected it to be. And everyone says that. As soon as Rob Hall popped it open, he said the exact same thing. And yeah, that's the case. This thing is very small. We sit it next to 8200. You can see it is much shorter and not that much bigger around, especially if you have the round head on the 8200. Might be tempted to compare the 8200 without the modifier on the front, but that seems a little unfair. Another item of interest, the charger that comes with the 8300 Pro is exactly the same charger as the battery charger that comes with the 8200 and 8200 Pro, totally cross compatible. And I fully expect that the batteries themselves, you've heard that you can stick an 8200 Pro in an 8300 Pro. I'm pretty sure that this battery is gonna work in an 8200 as well. And I'll be very interested to see if that affects the recycle times on the 8200. It's the same voltage, so it should be safe. I don't recommend trying it yourself until I've tested it, and I'll be testing that pretty soon in a later video. But anyway, let's speed this thing up a little bit. We are two minutes and 50 seconds in, and see how fast we can get. So, fast forward this, Wes. Got super cool slippers on here, oh yeah. That isolation life. I cannot wait to turn off that beep. You can already hear from the beep that the recycle time is pretty fast on this. Pretty much as soon as that half power pop goes off, you've got that beep. That seems like less than half a second. That great 8200 Pro inspired mount on the bottom here. Locks right on, doesn't turn very difficultly and the very smooth, continuously adjustable elbow, like that. What if this breaks right now? What if it overheats? I shouldn't have looked directly in that, even with my sunglasses on. I guess we won't get much of a review out of it, will we? So how are we doing for time? Five minutes, 17 seconds in. I usually call it at eight minutes. Oh, 
We are six and a half minutes in, and my recycle time has definitely slowed down. It appears to be taking almost a full two seconds to recycle. So that's definitely a change. I'm sorry, Maggie, I do not have any sunglasses that fit you. I think it's getting even slower still. It is still maintaining less than four seconds, but we're getting close to three seconds recycle time now. The internal fan is punching on between every flash now. And we're done. So, it did not overheat and die. So now what? Well, since it passed this stage of the test, we're going to shut her down, take out the battery. I'm gonna let it cool down for a few minutes, and then we're gonna go to the bonus round, one over one power, see how long that takes to overheat. All right, it's been about a half an hour. Put the battery back in, and we got our power set to one over one. Get our timer out, and start. Already sounds like we have about a two and a half second recycle time. I guess it might be 1.8 seconds. That's what the specs say. I'll give you a pass for now. Now, I took the stock reflector off. Gonna give this the benefit of the doubt. Let it breathe as much as possible. I figure this constricts airflow just a little bit. Now, there's no fan action yet after over a minute. Let's speed this up a bit. Three minutes in and our recycle time hasn't really changed much. My battery indicator though has gone down to two thirds. Fans are going full tilt now. You put your head up to them, they sound clearly audible, but just sitting back here, they're no louder than just the ambient room itself, so that's not a lot of noise. <clears throat> oh. We're slowing down, four minutes in. This is taking almost the full four seconds to reset. It's almost like it knew that I was gonna be testing it in four second intervals. Oh, fan just went up a notch. Didn't realize it had multiple levels like that. So almost five and a half minutes in, we're really blowing now. It's definitely clearly audible at this moment. Uh-oh. Yeah, we missed a cycle. We're stopping this now. Just shy of six minutes in, we ran out of one-to-one -one pops in four second intervals. Now about four minutes in, we ran out of our fast recycle time, but that's pretty solid. You can fire this, not talking HSS. I'll talk about that more in the full review when I get to test it. In this straight, non-high-speed sync mode, one-to-one, -one, for about four minutes without losing your recycle time. I think that might be a new winner. I can't remember how the 8600 Pro went. Check out, you can watch that video yourself and find out. So, I'm gonna get back into this, recharge this battery, and keep hitting this thing hard. Until next time. Ah, go take some photos.